Hello everybody and welcome to the vloggy thing. Today I am once again in my studio. Well, our studio, I should say, because this is technically a joint effort for the museum. Um, and I wanted to just go through and do a little bit of a video of what we have done with this studio, because I think it's actually pretty awesome. Um, there's so many little things that we have that we needed to do to make this thing actually work. And I just wanted to show it off since my other channel actually has well, a video on it now. We're working on making more videos, but uh, time constraints and crap like that. And it, obviously, it's not easy being a producer. So, yeah, I wanted to show off what we have. I have a couple other things here that I will get into in depth. And then I have a couple other things behind the camera, and I want to show off the studio itself and my goals, and hopefully this everything actually worked out like I wanted it to. We start out life in handicap mode. Whee! Hopefully it's not too shaky. I do have a digital image stabilizer setting in here. It's actually quite nice. But I will start with basically our setup. Obviously we have the camera I'm holding right now, but we also have these two other cameras. We have my GoPro. And then we got a new camera that is almost identical to this camera. It's a Vixia, or Vixia HF R500. This one's an R50. They're basically the same thing as just the R50 has a few extra you know, features and stuff like that. Um, and we had to do some interesting things. Obviously, the GoPro is easy sitting on its tripod that it's been sitting on for a decade now, I think. <laughs> that tripod is ancient. Um, but we got the Vixia hooked up to this interesting little gizmo because, and this is interesting, the uh, R500 has absolutely no remote capabilities, so I can't control it remotely. So if I wanted to zoom it in without touching it, for example, like because every time you try to touch it, it shakes the camera. And if you don't want to do that, well, you kind of got to zoom in remotely. And the R500 doesn't have that ability. And the R50, while supposedly does have that ability, sucks at it hard. Uh, my dad invented this thing that we have been calling the thing longer. Now, this is far more complicated than it really needs to be because it's actually designed to do a couple of different things all at the same time but right now it's just in thing longer mode. Now basically what it is is we have this little stepper motor servo thingamabob here that's connected to the zoom in function. It's going to be expanded upon and it's going to be able to zoom in and zoom out remotely as well. We have the controller board here which as I said does a hell of a lot more than just zoom in and out. So it's, there's more circuitry here than there needs to be. This is a multifunction board. And then we have the uh, remote control switch over here. So when I flick the switch, the servo pulls on the zoom. And then when I unflick the switch, it releases the zoom. And it's a great little thing because that's kind of what we needed. That's exactly what we needed. We just needed the ability to zoom in at a very steady and controlled rate without shaking the camera. And that little servo motor that we found is perfect for that. Uh, we also have, obviously, standard production tools. Got a clacker board so I can sync audio and video. We have my very, uh, well, very nice. I'd say expensive, but it's a very nice Blue Yeti microphone that I've been using pretty much constantly. And then, of course, let's, let's back up a bit. And we can see that the studio's here. This is the standard studio. And my goal was to make it look larger than it actually is. And I think I succeeded. Because if we step back even further, we can see that it's just this little cut out, like rounded area in our, in our storage area <laughs> with all its crazy little setup. 
the acoustic foam in the background, uh, that, hang on, let me move around the lights, that is what the acoustic foam looks like normally. Since we're not recording it, there's no point in covering up that acoustic foam, but we put, we found uh, denim, it's actually denim fabric that we wrapped around, it's great color, I love the blue, and so everything that's on the camera, all the acoustic foam on the camera is wrapped around, or wrapped with this denim fabric, but the ones that aren't on the camera obviously don't get wrapped because there's no point. Uh, I think the red has a very nice contrast to the blue and the white and makes it easier to actually see what's going on. I don't know. Um, I'm not good with colors, but it seems to work. It seems to work well enough. Uh, we have our studio lights here. These are lights that my dad had in his basement for, like, ever. Because he's kind of a hobbyist photographer. And uh, so he had these. He hadn't been using them as much. So I borrowed them for a little while and then brought them in here because, well, we can use them. These aren't great studio lights, but they work well enough. He's looking, thinking about getting dedicated studio lights or something like that. I don't know, it's a debate, it's a debate. But uh, over here, our sound area, this I find interesting. Because, I mean, just for what we're doing, look how fancy we're going. It, it, it's kind of crazy. The top box here, that guy right there, is for the wireless microphone setup, my lapel mic that I'm using right now. That's where that goes in. It's a four-channel wireless receiver. We have two lapel mics and two uh, wireless handheld mics that we can use with that. Uh, it's not as good a quality as the Blue Yeti, but I mean, what do you expect? They're wireless microphones. and We got them on the cheap. We actually got them for our, um, uh, uh, ooh, I said the banquet area. Yes, there we go. The banquet area up in the restaurant so that people can do like presentations and stuff. But it never really caught on and it didn't really work that well with the PA system up there. So we're just using it down here. Plus, the, the, nobody ever uses those things anymore. They're very, very rarely used. So we're gonna actually put them to use down here. And of course, all that feeds into a giant mixer board that my dad got cheap because he can find anything cheap online. Thank you, eBay. And a hell of a lot of patience. Uh, as you can see, we don't have that much plugged into it right now. We've got line one, line two, which are both the wireless mics, uh, the wireless lapel mics. And that's really it for right now. We have other things that we can plug in, like the Blue Yeti has XLR out. It's got stereo XLR out, if we ever choose to use that. But I find that the USB side of it just works better, so I tend to go with that. Uh, we also have external audio in. Play. I think it's actually labeled tape deck. Uh, well, it's labeled TR there, but it, in the manual it's labeled tape deck. So <laughs> you can tell we didn't exactly buy a new one here, but it works. It works well enough. Once we figured out the gain problem, and I'll get that to that in a second. Uh, and then this bottom box here, this rack mount device, it, it's, it's a digital recorder. So basically, I'm not recording the microphone with the camera or with a computer somewhere. It's that box right there. And I just like the idea because it's kind of like the camera where you put, push record and it stores it internally on a little SD card, which is right there. And it's currently one gig. Um, it's audio. I don't know how much I'm going to need for audio. Yeah, it helps when I actually remember to hit record. The first video that we actually recorded where we were supposed to use this thing, I forgot to hit record and then we recorded for like a half an hour before I realized it. Uh, at that point, we just kind of went, you know what, screw it. We'll go with the Blue Yeti. Conveniently, I did have the Blue Yeti hooked up so I could record a different channel uh, just in case the lapel mics didn't turn out as well as we hoped. Uh, and it was a good thing that I did because the lapel mics didn't record, period. So yeah, then we got some, that's, that's some fun there. Now the real fun that we had with this was actually getting it to actually sound right. Uh, every time we would plug this thing in, it would sound, it would just a horrible hiss of static, this crazy, crazy hiss of static. 
and it took us an entire day fiddling with the settings trying to figure out what was wrong. We actually have a second one, pass over my very uh, cluttered desk here. That one is our original mixer board. Uh, we thought it, we broke it because it would just output hiss constantly. So we thought we broke the preamp, but or post amp, or whatever you actually call it that's in the thing. We thought we blew it up. No, uh, okay, so here's the trick with audio. XLR, while it does have the ability to pump power, like phantom power, it's not really designed for amplified audio. The uh, wireless microphone is designed to be plugged into a regular PA system. So it has amplified audio. It amplifies the audio out. Well, the mixer also amplifies the audio, and so does the digital recorder. So I had to fiddle with gain and volume. It was just crazy. It was crazy insane. We had to fiddle with that for like ever. And we didn't know this. We're not audio experts. This, I'm, this is really the first time I've delved that deeply into a mixer board at all. So it's a whole new experience for me. And hopefully it actually turns out very well or turns out well because this is the first video we're actually recording with this full setup. And you can tell that it's really interesting because the audio levels here don't, don't even show. Really, they don't. I, I don't really get it. Everything's turned up well enough and you can hear it well enough when I tested this thing. It, you can hear it well enough. I, I don't get it why it's so weird. Yeah, that's pretty much our studio, our little studio, and it's in our uh, storage area. <laughs> it's just a little corner there that I, I'm quite proud of this, and I think it's quite impressive what I did with what little we had, and basically how much we were worried about like money and stuff like that, uh, though we weren't too terribly worried about money. But, uh, you know, the camera here, the uh, R500s still sell for like $250, $300. The camera I'm holding in my hand is going regularly for $350. I got this guy cheap, uh, but I got this guy several years ago when I first started into the whole YouTube thing. And I didn't really get into it uh, until I figured out that white balance helps considerably when you start futzing with cameras. That's something that the GoPro never really bothered you know, never really had a problem with. But this guy, you gotta white balance it. It's auto white balance isn't good, so I may, I've been manually white balancing it. Uh, the brightness, however, that thing's automatic, so if you're seeing the brightness go up and down, that's, that's because I left it at automatic brightness. Uh, so now that I think about it, I don't know if, is that just exposure? Yeah, well, I can manually control the exposure. I can control a lot of things on this camera. Uh, but yeah, so I just wanted to do a little video about the studio. Hopefully all this stuff turns out well. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Any suggestions would be more than welcome. Uh, any criticisms will be more than welcome as well. Just try to keep it civil, you know? Don't be like, you suck, and you piece of crap, and that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm just screwing around. So I'm going to end the episode here, and uh, yeah. So I, I, I still love this little thing right there. So I can actually zoom in remotely. <laughs> so I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun.